the production possibilities curve is an economic model that aims to demonstrate that there is a trade-off between various alternatives that any society can choose. So for example, what we have here is we have our capital goods plotted on the y-axis. On the x-axis we have our consumer goods. What the production possibilities curve demonstrates is that society can choose a combination of various capital goods and various consumer goods. So if we look over here to the right, what we have are some various combinations that society can choose. So for example, if society were to choose to devote all of its productive resources into the production of capital goods, or I'm sorry, consumer goods, then of course it would be able to produce zero capital goods. So if we were to plot that point right here, that would demonstrate a point at which society is producing 10 units of consumer goods and zero units of capital goods. Of course, at the other extreme, if society wanted to produce only capital goods, according to this table, uh, society would be able to produce exactly four units of capital goods. And of course, the loss is that there are no resources left over to produce any consumer goods. Uh, so that would be demonstrated as a point here, for example. At that point, society is producing four capital goods and zero consumer goods. Points B, C, and D in the chart represent some combination that society is choosing. So, for example, at point B, society is choosing to allocate some resources into the production of capital goods, but most resources into the production of consumer goods. So that would be a point something like this, where you would have nine consumer goods being produced, and this point would be the equivalent of one unit of capital goods. Now, if we plotted the rest of these points, we would see that the production possibilities curve looks something like that, where this is point A, this is point B, we plot point C, point D, and of course the other extreme. Now, this curve, the production possibilities curve, is also known as the production possibilities frontier. What that means is that any point along the curve, any point that lies on the curve, represents the maximum possible production that any society can choose. So for example, if we were to put a point F out here beyond the, point, beyond the curve, that represents a point that is impossible. It is unattainable. Society does not have the productive capacity to produce that level of capital goods and consumer goods. If we were to put a point, for example, G, that lies inside of the production possibilities frontier, that would represent a point that is, of course, obtainable, but not efficient, because the economy has the capacity or the potential to produce out here on the frontier. So here, there would be productive inefficiency where society is not producing at the level that it's capable of. Now, last thing that we want to be clear about with the production possibilities frontier is that it demonstrates opportunity cost. So for example, if we are initially at point A, where society is choosing to produce zero capital goods and 10 consumer goods, if society then decides to reallocate some resources and says, you know what, we really need some capital goods, and they decide to produce one unit of capital goods, there is a cost involved. There is the foregone production of consumer goods, the lost production of consumer goods. So for example, the opportunity cost of producing one unit of capital goods is one unit of consumer goods. That's the foregone production of consumer goods. If we were to further increase our production of capital goods, again, that's going to come at the expense of consumer goods. So if society wanted to produce at point C one additional unit of capital goods, 
then there is going to be an opportunity cost in foregone production of consumer goods. Consumer goods declines from nine units to seven, and we see the opportunity cost increases to two units of consumer goods. If we further decide to increase production of capital goods from point C to point D, increasing from two to three units of capital goods, then the cost in terms of consumer goods is that lost production. Consumer goods decrease from seven to four units. And so we see that the opportunity cost becomes three. And finally, if we were to produce only capital goods, the foregone production in consumer goods from that final move from point D to E would be four. So what we see here is that the production possibilities curve is a manifestation of what is referred to as the law of increasing opportunity costs. In other words, the greater production of capital goods requires greater units of resources that go into that production. Those first resources that society uh, employs in the production of capital goods are relatively fit for the production of capital goods. So the cost in terms of consumer goods is relatively low. As we increase our production of capital goods, we are increasingly uh, using resources that are less fit for the production of capital goods. In fact, they are better fit for the production of consumer goods. And so it becomes increasingly costly to produce more capital goods with less fit resources. And so that is why we see the law of increasing opportunity costs. Uh, so society must choose an allocated point. Where would we like to be? What is the socially optimal combination of capital goods and consumer goods? And the final word on that is if we choose a point like B, which is very consumer good heavy and light on capital goods, we're really making an allocated decision uh, to consume more in the present, essentially to have a better lifestyle in the present at the expense of future economic growth and future improvements in the standard of living. If we were to sacrifice consumer goods in the present by producing a point like, say, point D, we are investing a lot of our resources in the production of capital goods, which has the potential to increase our standard of living in the future.